made by Rio Grande. San Bernardino Sheriff's Office calling all cars. Attention all sheriff's cars. Broadcast 188. Investigate the report of a dead body found on a detour off Valley Boulevard. Maybe a murder. That's all. method of producing gasoline. On this fact, oil men universally agree. Rio Grande Cracks is refined by the Sinclair refining process. And Sinclair is the world's largest independent oil company whose products are used in 45 nations of the world. Rio Grande Cracks is a patented, exclusive product that you can buy only through Rio Grande dealers. In the West, only Rio Grande has been licensed to use the Sinclair process. The best judges of gasoline are the buyers and users of gasoline for police cars, fire engines, and other emergency equipment. Police cars drive 800% more than the average motor. They drive longer, faster, farther, and harder. More police cars, fire engines, ambulances, and other emergency equipment use Rio Grande Crack wherever it is sold than any other brand. Over 30 cities and counties have specified Rio Grande Crack as the finest gasoline obtainable to power their emergency equipment. Last year, they drove 65 million miles. With the gasoline that will give you police car performance in your car. Rio Grande Cracked Gasoline. At your independent Rio Grande dealer. Tomorrow. It is our pleasure to present a man who acted as consultant in this case. Clark Sellers is an examiner of questioned documents with more than 20 years' experience in identifying handwriting, typewriting, paper and ink, forgeries, and anonymous letter cases. He was called into such famous cases to examine the handwriting as that of William Edward Hickman, Winnie Ruth Judge, and he was the only expert in the West called by the Attorney General of New Jersey to examine the ransom letters in the Lindbergh kidnapping case to determine whether or not Bruno Richard Hoffman wrote them. We present Mr. Sellers. The art of identification is becoming more and more a real science. Today, many of our larger police departments have been have men scientifically trained who specialize on the interpretation of physical evidence. In counties of smaller population, it is only natural that the officials should call in to help them, specialists who have been trained in the field of identification work. It has been my good fortune to meet some of the outstanding specialists in other fields of identification work. And in this particular case, you are about to hear I had the opportunity of recommending some of these specialists to District Attorney Muscle and to Sheriff Shea. Frequently, physical, physical clues leave at the scene, left at the scene of the crime show more eloquently and more accurately what occurred than can any eyewitness or ear witness. The microscope, the crucible, the camera, the spectrograph, all scientific instruments of precision were made use of in this very interesting case you are about to hear. But your program is ready. I'll be with you again at the end of the program. A pale moon glimmered through the trees and cast weird shadows across the deserted road. A heavily loaded truck bumped along the rough terrain. The driver dreaded the dusty, unpaved road. Suddenly, light came out of the darkness ahead. The driver saw the dim outlines of another truck. Headlights, taillights, clearance lights, all burning. Oh. Oh, that's a crazy place for a guy to park his truck. Hey, you need any help? Hey! That's funny. Don't seem to be nobody around. I think I'll take a look. And where does Sam Hill that flashlight? Oh. Nobody in the cab. Radiator's warm. Well, maybe he had a flat, huh? I'll take a look. Yeah. Wait a minute. This looks like blood. It is blood. There's something fishy about this. Good Lord. I'm going to phone the sheriff's office. Taylor Bright, who had received the driver's call, flashed the word to County Coroner R.E. Williams in Colton. 
then detailed a veteran officer, Deputy Sheriff Harry Heath, to the investigation. The coroner picked up the truck driver from the station where he telephoned, and the two met Officer Heath at the scene of the tragedy. That fellow couldn't have fallen out of the truck. He's on the wrong side. Besides, both doors are closed. That's right. Anyway, the truck isn't in gear. That disposes of the accident theory. How long do you figure he's been dead? Mm, I'd say about six or eight hours. Well, let's see if he's got a watch. Here it is. Stopped at 821. Why? Well, it establishes the time of his death. Let's see if we can find anything else that might identify him. Well, here's a billfold. Hmm? Identification card says Harry Walsh. 2076 Paramount Drive, Southgate. Yeah, over close to Los Angeles. Yeah. Here's five dollars. Evidently no robbery motive. Well, it's too dark to try to find much evidence till daybreak. Yeah. One thing's obvious. If he was killed by being run over with the truck, we won't have to spend any time looking for weapons. I wonder about that. I'll say one thing to this place. It's isolated enough. Whoever did this is probably miles away by now. No witnesses. You never can tell about these things. That's true. Let's take a look at the truck registration slip. Okay. Yeah, here it is. Smith Tank Line Corporation, 2605 East 26th Street, Los Angeles. Well, we'll check on that in the morning. Daybreak, the force of investigators was augmented by Under Sheriff Emmett Shea and Deputy Sheriff O.W. Bothor, superintendent of the Identification Bureau. Coroner Williams, meantime, has made a discovery. There's a cigarette lighter one of the truck drivers found under Walsh's truck in the sand. Uh, I wonder what a truck driver would be doing with a perfume cigarette lighter. I didn't know they went in for perfume. Hmm. Better put it in a glass jar to preserve that odor. Maybe a valuable as a clue. Yes, here's something else. Footprints under the truck here. They must have been made by a giant, judging by the size. They're at least 14 inches long. Mm. Here's some more tracks, too. Evidently, a woman's foot made them. Sort of pigeon-toed, wouldn't you say? Yeah. See the way the ball of the foot curves in from the heel? I still don't think of the guy that murdered Walsh just wandered off. I'll bet my hat you'll find car tracks around here somewhere. You're probably right. Let's take a look. Hey, Bill, come here. What is it? What are you there's your car tracks, all right. Yep. Two smooth tires and two practically new ones. What me? All of them different, as near as I can make them out. Mm-hmm. One's a new diamond trade, I see. That's well. All you got to do is find a car with four different tires. One diamond, two smooth ones, and another new one. Hmm. Simple. Yeah, simple. Like finding the well-known needle. Emma, are you? You and William. Come here a minute. What's on your mind, butt off? I found a rock with blood stains on it. Uh-oh. Let's see it. Let's see if we can find any blood around here. Yeah, there it is. I'll say it is. Must have gone down six or eight inches. At least. Evidently, our murderer didn't want us to find this. Yeah, that brings us down to what? One red cigarette lighter, never been used, and smells of perfume. And one rock matted with blood and hair. Four tire marks. All different. Lots of 14-inch footprints and several small ones. And I have a sneaking hunch that you'll find those small shoes spattered with blood. How come? Footprints are close to the body. And that's right. They are. Let's remember that. Yeah. I wonder who this bird is. Looks like he knows where he's going. Something you're looking for, mister? Yes, yes. My name is Smith. Fred Smith, the Smith Tank Line. This is one of my trucks. I hear Walsh has been run over. Yeah, we already sent the body to the morgue. Oh, it's too bad. Fine fellow, Walsh, fine fellow. Oh. Ideal driver. How long has he been working for you? Almost five years now. Started back in 1929. How were his habits? Dependable? One of the most dependable drivers we had. Well, this was a day as long. How did he get along with the other drivers? Oh, he never had a minute's trouble with anybody. His size probably had something to do with that. Yes, yes, Walsh was a powerful man. Say, quite a big man to kill him, wouldn't it? Kill him? I thought it was an accident. That's what we thought at first. But we just found this rock with matted hair on it. Mm, that's the same color hair, isn't it? Looks that way to us. Now, oh, Mr. Smith, do you know anybody who'd want Walsh out of the way? No, not at all. Why, his wife... Married? Oh, yes. He lived out in Southgate. Got married the year he started working for us. He uh, married a San Bernardino girl, I believe. Can you tell us anything else about Walsh? Mm, yes, yes. He was one of the biggest hearted men I ever knew. He'd been taking care of one of the drivers who'd been out of work for about uh, four months. Took him right into his home, gave him clothes, fed him and everything. I believe the driver's name was uh, Sanders. Was he ever in trouble? 
Have any enemies, men or women? Oh, no, not that I know of. But he did have a lot of friends. He was pretty well liked wherever he went. Thanks, Mr. Smith. I thought we ought to check up on some of these points. And on this Sanders. Back in San Bernardino, the deputies gathered in the office of Sheriff Ernest Shea and took time out to review their evidence. Two officers were sent to Los Angeles to break the news to Mrs. Walsh. Yes. Are you Mrs. Walsh? Yes, who are you? I'm Deputy Sheriff Heap from San Bernardino. Uh, this is Deputy Stocker. How do you do? Well, what can I do for you? Well, we found your husband this morning under his truck. He, well, he's dead. So Harry's dead. I always told him he drove too fast. Yes, and, well, we thought you might be willing to help us clear up some points. Well, of course, I... I'll help you all I can. Would you mind running over to San Bernardino with us? We'd like to get an official statement. Well, not at all. Uh, where did I put on a hat and part of my nose? Well, what do you think, Jim? I don't know. She seems awfully calm to me. Well, maybe she doesn't realize what's happened. On the other hand, maybe the shock's so great the news hasn't registered yet. What do you make of that water on the driveway? Oh, I don't know. I haven't thought about it. Well, I'm all ready. Uh, looks like you got a leaky faucet here. What? Uh, oh, oh the, that water in the driveway. Mm. Oh, well, I always wash my car on Sunday morning. Tiny helped me this morning. Mm. Who's Tiny? Tiny Sanders. He uh, used to live with us. Oh, I see. Uh, where is he now? Oh, I guess he's home. I, I don't see him very often. Mm. That's about one of us driving your car, Mrs. Walsh. The other one can go with you and ours. That's fine. Well, you two go in our car and I'll follow you. Oh, uh, by the way, where does Tiny live now? Well, he's living over in Huntington Park. Uh, we have to pass right by his place, and I'll point it out. The officers stopped at the place Mrs. Walsh pointed out. Sanders was informed of Walsh's death, and the quartet returned to San Bernardino to be questioned by District Attorney Muscle. Now, Mrs. Walsh, somebody murdered your husband. We're trying to find out who did it. Your cooperation will be invaluable to us. Well, I'll help all I can. You know of anyone who might have had reason to kill your husband? No. No, I haven't any idea who might do a thing like that. It's too horrible for words. And did your husband and this man, uh, Tiny Sanders, ever have any trouble? Oh, no, 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 sir. No, they were the best of friends. There never was a crossword between them. Where were you last night? Uh, what? I said, where were you last night? Oh, why, well, I, I drove Mr. Sanders to Los Angeles, and uh, then I, I, I went window shopping. What else did you do? Oh, nothing much. Spent most of the time on Broadway looking around. And I, I came home, I guess it must have been around 10 o'clock, and went to bed. When did you last see your husband? Well, I was at the yard when he left the scene. He waved goodbye. I didn't see him again. I wish it had been me instead of him. Oh, please let me alone tonight. I can't stand anymore. I can't stand it. Take her into the next room, Harry. Okay. Come along, Mr. Walsh. Jim, bring Sanders in here. All right. Sit down, Sanders. Okay. Sanders, I think you can help us, if you will. What's your full name? Hmm? Oh. Hey, uh, Donald Joseph Sanders. Where do you work? I don't. Been out of work for four months. I've been living with the Walsh's. Were you with Mrs. Walsh last night? Yeah, we had dinner together. And went for a drive. Where to? No, just around. No place in particular. Just one street and down another. Name one place in particular. Listen, copper, I ain't talking, see? I ain't telling you nothing. I got my reasons. I'll talk when the right time comes, but I ain't making no statement now. Bring in Mrs. Walsh, Jim. All right. Is this your handkerchief, Sanders? Sure. Sure, that's mine. What are these blood stains? Nosebleed. Here's Mrs. Walsh, Sam. Okay. Sit down, Mrs. Walsh. Thank you. May I see your shoes? What? Your shoes. I'd like to look at them. Oh, oh, why, sure, yes. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Mm. What are these stains on the back of your shoes? Blood stains. Blood stains? Yes. Where did they come from? I killed a chicken last night. I see. If you don't mind, I'll keep them. The matron will give you some prison shoes. Prison shoes? Yes. 
We're asking you and Mr. Sanders here to be our guests for a few days. Sheriff Ernest Shea, District Attorney Muckle, and the officers working on the case, after comparing notes on the evidence already collected, felt the necessity of calling in an expert on several puzzling questions. Accordingly, Clark Sellers was called from Los Angeles. Immediately, District Attorney Muscle placed the facts before him. Here's a sample of sand from the scene of the crime. Here's sand taken from Mrs. Walsh's shoes. Here are the shoes themselves. Here's a bloody handkerchief taken from the pocket of Sanders. Here's a perfume cigarette lighter. Well, this case requires various specialists, scientific men who are trained to interpret clues. Now, uh, where did this cigarette lighter come from? Mrs. Walsh claims she gave that to her husband three weeks ago. Mm, peculiar odor, isn't it, for a truck driver to carry around? Mm. Have you examined Mrs. Walsh's purse? Yes, yes, here are the articles. Hmm, bottle of perfume, powder puff, handkerchief. <laughs> Got a lot of junk here, hasn't she? Yes, the usual stuff a woman carries around. Well, what else have you found? Well, here's a rock we found at the scene of the crime. A murdered man's bill hall, pictures of the body, and truck, and the tire marks found at the scene. Found the car that made the tire marks? Hey, Sam, take a look out that window. Oh, what is it? See that toupee in the jail yard there? Yeah, yeah, that's a wash car, isn't it? Take a look at that right rear wheel. Well, well I... Hey, look, fellas. There's the car that made those tracks. Well, I'd suggest that you take impressions of those tires, then drive out and get impressions at the scene of the crime. I'll just take this purse and perfume along, if I may, and this lighter. I'll have to have them inspected by an expert in that line. I'll report to you just as soon as we find anything definite. <laughs> Angeles, Sellers summoned Dr. A.T. Frascati, noted cosmetologist, and Ray Pinker, forensic chemist of the Los Angeles Police Department. Ray, here's a pair of shoes worn by a suspect in this San Bernardino case I phoned you about. Lots of stains on them. Yes. The district attorney wanted to be sure what those stains are. Now, here's some pieces of clothing from the victim and a handkerchief from another suspect. See what you can discover from them. Okay. How about that sand? Well, this sample came from the scene of the crime. This came from the woman's shoes, mm-hmm. and this sample is from the cuff of the man's trousers, and this is from the yard of the woman's home. Well, I've got to work on them right away. Mm-hmm. This uh, perfume, Mr. Sellers, it is the same on the cigarette lighter and in the purse. You're sure about that? Positive. Perfumes, like a music, have no musical vibration. They are the same in both cases. Well, Mr. Muscle and Sheriff Shea want to be sure it's the same perfume as that in the bottle found in the purse. It is absolutely the same. Mm-hmm. I understand the woman claims to have given the lighter to her husband three weeks ago. Is that possible? It is not a possible. The lighter would have a stronger smell of grease had it been carried by a man employed as this one was. Oh, Clark, come here a minute. What have you found? Look through this microscope. Hmm. Looks the same in both specimens, doesn't it? Yeah. Now, that's from the woman's shoe. And this one on the right is from the road where the body was found. Well, let's examine them spectrographically. Wait a minute, sir. Crucible isn't hot enough yet. How about the sand from a yard? How does it compare? I'm just putting that under the lens. Take a look at it. Hmm. Looks very similar. Let me see. Uh-huh. A little smaller and smoother, though. Let's burn some of the sand and get spectrographic readings. That's the first time I ever saw anything like that. How's it progressing? Well, they're identical in chemical composition. That's unusual. See for yourself. The sand from the road, the sand from the shoes, and that from the yard is exactly alike. Well, maybe they are chemically, but they're different microscopically. Yes. The only thing we can say definitely is that the sand from the man's pants cuff is the same as that in the road. Well, that's right. Except for the microscopic difference, the three samples in the woman's case are identical. That's the way it stands. We'll see about these bloodstains now. I'll see how Dr. Frescati's coming along with his perfume. Well, Doctor, anything more definite? A perfume is the evening in Paris. Bourgeois makes it. The powder puff is as strong with it as is the handkerchief and the lining of the purse. The other articles are also contaminated. The perfume on the lighter is without a doubt the same as that in the purse. How long would you say the lighter had been out of the purse? Not a more than two or three days at the most. If it had not been placed in the glass jar, it would have lost its fragrance in a very few hours. Then it's safe to say that both the lighter and the purse were together when the lighter was lost. Undoubtedly. 
Well, the blood stains match anyway. All of them? All of them. Stains on the rock, the shoes, the handkerchief, and on the clothes. Additional stains were found on the clothing of Sanders and on the upholstery of the Walsh Coupe. These also proved to be of human blood. On the basis of these findings, the case was submitted to the grand jury on February 27th, just 17 days after the crime. The jury reviewed the evidence and returned indictments charging Mrs. Walsh and Sanders with the murder of Harry Walsh. In the courtroom of Superior Judge Frank Leonard on April 24th, the case came to trial under the prosecution of Chief Deputy District Attorney James King. I call attention of the jury and the court to the evidence in this case. Here is Exhibit A. Peculiar tire marks found at the scene of the crime. They are the same as the tire marks made by the car of Mrs. Walsh. That car must have been there. I show you here a photograph of the footprints found in the sand beside the truck. They are identical with the footprints of the defendant Sanders. The truck driver who found the body testifies that. I, uh, I found that motor of the truck running and a body underneath the wheel. Investigators found... He couldn't the... have fallen out and then have the truck run over him because both doors were closed and the car wasn't in gear. I found a rock with blood stains on it, matted with hair. Other witnesses, expert chemists, have testified that the sand from the man's pants cup is the same as that in the road. The perfume is an evening in Paris. The powder puff from the woman's purse is a heavy with it, as is the handkerchief and the lining of the purse. The perfume on the cigarette lighter found beside the body is undoubtedly the same as that in the purse. And another expert wit witness says that, according to analysis by chemist Tinker, the blood stains on the rock, the handkerchief taken from Sanders, the woman's shoes, and the clothing of the victim all match. When officers went to the home of Mrs. Walsh, she told them... Oh, oh, that water in the driveway? Oh, I always wash my car on Sunday. Tiny helped me this morning. Hmm? Who's Tiny? Tiny Sanders. He used to live with us. When the district attorney attempted to question Sanders, he listen, said... Listen, Copper, I ain't telling you nothing. I got my reasons. I'll talk when the right time comes, but I ain't making no statements now. I think the time has come for Sanders to talk. Call Donald Joseph Sanders. Donald Joseph Sanders! Raise your right hand. Do you tell me swear testimony about giving this case to be the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth after God? I do. Take stand. Sanders... I want you to tell this court exactly what occurred on the night of February 11th. Well, me and Marie, that's Mrs. Wolfe, we drove out to Manning Avenue to overtake Harry. Wanted to hitch a ride to Phoenix to get a job. When we caught up with him, I flashed my lights and he stopped. Got out of the car and went over to his truck. He got out and came towards me and started yelling. How many times am I going to have to tell you to keep away from my wife? Uh, Harry, Marie, just drove me out here to overtake you. There ain't nothing wrong in that, is there? That's what I'm going to find out. Now, listen, Harry, I don't want no trouble with you. We came out here to see if you'd let me ride to Phoenix with you so I could take that job. You ain't looking for no job. All you want to do is to lay around and loaf off for somebody else. And I'm getting better with it. And you keep away from my wife and stay out of my sight. Well, if that's the way you feel about it, I'll get going. Well, that's how I feel about it. Okay, I'm sorry I bothered you. Look out, buddy. He's going to get you with that Are you there? So you I'll get you. Oh, Tiny. What have you done? You killed him. That's the way it happened. He was going to hit me with a wrench. I picked up that rock there and I let him have it. Order! Order in the court! Call Mrs. Marie Walsh. Mrs. Marie Walsh, raise your right hand. You tell me, sir, it's testimony about giving this case to be the truth, all truth, and nothing but the truth, help you God. I do. Take stand. Your name is Marie Walsh? Yes. And you were the wife of Harry Walsh? Yes. Did you, on the night of February 11th, 1934, drive in a coupe, a small automobile, from Southgate, California, to the vicinity of Manning Avenue, about three miles east of the city of Colton? I, I think so. Don't you know? Uh, yes, yes, I did. And did you, on that night, see one, Donald Thomas Sanders, kill your husband? I object, Your Honor, on the grounds that he's trying to lead the witness. Objection sustained. Prosecutor will please rephrase that question. Mrs. Walsh, will you tell this jury and this court just what did occur on Manning Avenue on the night of February 11th? Well, after Harry left the San Company yard, Tiny, that's Mr. Sanders, came out to my house and asked me if I'd drive him to San Bernardino so we could overtake Harry and get a ride to Phoenix. Well, I said yes, and so we started out. We overtook Harry just east of Colton. Then Tiny got out. Did you remain in the car? Yes. 
Did you see Harry Willis attack Sanders? Yes. Did you see Sanders strike your husband with this rock? Yes. Then what did you do? I ran to the truck and I threw myself on my knees beside Harry. Harry. Harry, speak to me. Oh, Harry. Oh, darling, don't leave me. Why couldn't this have been me instead of you? Is that all you did? Yes, that's all I could do. Harry was dead. In just a moment, Mr. Sellers will give you an added highlight on this case. Tomorrow, a half million copies of the Calling All Cars News will be waiting at Rio Grande stations for the motorists who enjoy this sparkling publication. There's an exclusive story on Trevor McGee and Molly that will bring you a close personal picture of this most charming and interesting couple. There are three true detective stories. Fast reading news and the radio people and programs you enjoy most. A complete guide for your motion picture attendant. And previews of the latest show. It's full of pictures, personalities, and human interest. And it's free. Another reminder about that motor of yours. Sinclair motor oils won't break down at the most intense heat. That's because they're de-waxed, de-jellied, super-refined by Sinclair. Sinclair writes the laws of lubrication. Eight major airlines, 150 railroads, great fleets of ships, and motorists the world over depend upon Sinclair motor oil. Sinclair Opaline, only 25 cents a quart in tamper-proof cans at your Rio Grande dealers where... You get police car performance with Rio Grande cracked gasoline. We now present again Mr. Sellers. The jury, obviously affected by Mrs. Walsh's story, deliberated 17 hours, then filed back into the courtroom with this decision. We, the jury, find the defendant, Marie Walsh, not guilty of the charge contained in the information. We further find Donald Joseph Sanders guilty of manslaughter. Sanders was sentenced on May 14, 1934, to serve a term of one to ten years in San Quentin. Thank you, Mr. Keller. San Bernardino Sheriff's Office calling all cars, attention all cars. The cancellation of broadcast 188 regarding a murder on the detour off Valley Boulevard. The second this case is now in custody. That's all. Michael Parker saying good night for Rio Grande. <laughs>